Amen. 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 Are we live? Are we live? I think so. Oh, let me just turn this down. As we welcome everybody this this evening to uh, what is it? The third episode of of Kingdom Minds. <laughs> Amen. So today we got a really really interesting topic. Let me just pull up my my camera on, on Zoom right here, really quick to the side. Let's see here. All right, so we definitely have a great topic today. The topic today is can believers judge? All right, so as you invite people in, this is a because we uh, many of us as uh, uh, believers we throw that word around that you know you can't judge or we can't judge. You brothers, you ever heard somebody say that you can't judge? We can't judge. judge. Yeah. All don't right, so what, what? Yeah, they say don't judge me. So we're definitely going to tap into that. Um, I'm having a little issue with my camera here. Like I said, we're, we're new to this. We're still learning this, but I'll, I'll get it. But anyways, so many of us want to throw the word around. Oh, you can't judge. Um, really quick, you brothers, give me one. Give me one word. Can you judge? Yes or no? Absolutely. It shouldn't be a scary word. Absolutely. Yes. I, but mm -hmm. there's a difference. The scripture right. says judge according to righteous judgment. So there's a difference mm. between righteous judgment and unrighteous judgment. There we yeah. go. Amen. Right. Right. Not on the not an appearance. Don't judge on appearance. Judge, yes. judge deep. That's the same probably thing. Right. Amen. So there we go. So th they got the answer right there. Yes, we can judge. And just like what Brother Gerard said, it's not by the appearance, but you know, we're judging the the, the inward. I believe the, the scripture says. It says we're not judging outward, but we're judging inwardly. So, for an example, if someone comes like in, in their dress with a with a hoodie with a hat on, I shouldn't say, "Wow, that person, you know, he he's not saved." Like, yeah. how do you know if that person is saved or not because of the way they're dressing, or because they may talk with slang? Mm -hmm. You don't know if they're saved or not. You don't know if the Holy Ghost filled because you never met that person at all. So yeah. now you're making a judgment that is not a righteous judgment. Now you now you are judging the person because you're not familiar with that individual and you don't know what kind of fruit he or she carries, but there it's different, but it's different. If you are uh, and remember, we only could judge believers, not unbelievers. You see today's really about, we're talking about believers today. Okay. The, yep. the ones that go to church every week, it, we're, we're, the ones that um say, Hey, I believe Jesus Christ. He's my Lord and savior. This is for you today. Yeah. All right. Yeah, me, we're going to bring scriptures up. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, as you were speaking also, you said, don't judge. Uh, would you say uh, an appearance? You also can't, uh, Let's take it a step further. It just came to my mind. You also can't judge on, on a slip up or a mistake. Mm. We're all flesh. We're all human. It doesn't mean, um, you know, a, no one's like Jesus. We've all sinned for, for we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, no one's, no one's perfect. So you also can't judge on a, on a, on a mistake or a slip up. No, Amen. sure. But, but what we have to establish first, before we get into it, we have to establish what is unrighteous judgment and what is righteous judgment. According to what God is saying, my judgment is unrighteous if I'm giving you my opinion. What I think mm, yeah. it's not judgment for you to tell you what thus saith the Lord is. That's actually love. See, we have a we have a skewed idea of what love is today because of the culture. Mm. Right. So look, look at what the scripture says in first John chapter three and 18. It says, my little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, Come on. but indeed and in truth right so right. for me to give you love i have to give you the truth i have to give you the word of god that is love when i tell someone the truth according to whatever it is that's going on in their life Amen. that's not being judgmental to bring forth the truth but now what has happened is many people are silenced today yeah. we're silenced because we don't want to get that stigma of being judgmental or being yeah. loveless or or whatever the case may be yeah. Well, you know, we, we, uh, sorry, but we judge on a daily. We, I mean, if you're on, every if, day, if, if you're on a, I mean, we judge naturally. So, so why can't we judge in the church to be better people? We judge if we're on a sports team and you have five players in a basketball or, or a softball team and you see a couple of your players slacking, coming late, they're not practicing, they're, they're getting out of shape. You're going to judge them and you're going to say, listen, the rules of the team to be a to be a championship team the standards in the team is to be the best and to love this game and i see you're not doing your best mm. mm -hmm. so so we judge on the daily 
But yet mm-hmm. when we go into the church building, Come on. don't don't judge don't judge anyone. Don't 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 try to make this team better. Let's make our baseball team better. But let's not try to make the you know the church better. Right. By 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 bringing our brother out of the out of the pit. It's not judging. We're actually aren't we dragging him out of the out of the um the pit? Out of, amen. Out of, out of the fire. Hello to Eric. Eric, we see you, Eric, Jasmine. Hello to everybody. Sorry, we were just a few minutes late. Had a little technical, you know, difficulties, but we already prayed against that. So, you know, we figured it out. Um, so here we are. Um, we're definitely talking about can believers judge. So, so we see you, Cynthia. Make sure you guys like and, and you share this so everyone could get involved with this conversation here. And uh, a little bit later on, I'm going to put the Zoom ID up, um, the, the meeting ID and the passcode, and you guys could join us in the chat room if you guys need prayer if you have any questions you can just come in for you know for a moment and uh get some prayer whatever you guys like amen but, um you know when i think of the, of the word um judging people don't want to be held accountable that's, that's it that's, that's the problem that's it so the moment you say listen brother like like my two brothers here they say lewis the bible says don't be given to wine and they see me drinking four or five six glasses it, they have the right to point their finger at me and say, listen, like you, you shouldn't be doing that. Like, that's not right. Like now you're going to, you could slip into sin, you know, because now you, you don't have a sober mind. Like the Bible says, now you're being taken by that wine, by that alcohol drink. And they have the right to point their finger at me. And I shouldn't say, Hey, stop judging me. You can't judge me. No, what they're doing is they're, they're holding me accountable. And that's what true love is. So to me, when, when someone is judging righteously, that's accountability and that's showing that they truly love me. And if they didn't love me, then they'll keep their mouth shut and they oh. wouldn't correct me for slipping into sin. Amen. And, and one of the scriptures about not judging is extremely abused today. And I kind of want to deal with that a little bit because the only people that throw that term around of, first of all, only God can judge me isn't in the mm. Bible. Not I think I heard you say that little Tupac said that, right? Tupac said that believers. Stop <laughs> yeah. saying, if you're a believer, stop saying not in the no, Bible. Don't say that no more, please. Yeah. Yes. It's, 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 it's not in the Bible. And in fact, you would rather judge yourself or have somebody else judge you than God judge you. Trust Come me. On. You don't want God to judge you. You mm. think you do. Um, but one of the most abused verses and in, 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 in one of the things that I see a lot of the times is the only people that have a problem with being held accountable. Mm, come on. It's not like I'm your, your your father or I'm somebody standing over your shoulder trying to find fault constantly in your life. But if a brother comes to you out of love, let, let me say this. Early on in my walk, I had an older brother in my life in the Lord that I was able to respect. Mm. And he saw me growing in the Lord, but he also saw me doing something that wasn't right. Right. And the brother came to me and he brung about correction. Mm. And rather than get mad at him, I accepted it because you know what? He was right. But see, that's why you have to have a desire and a relationship with Jesus Christ to be more like him, because if that's really your desire, you won't have a problem with correction, Mm. right? You won't have a problem with with Jeremy coming and saying, hey, brother Gerard, you know, you know, brother, you're a little loud. You're a little overbearing. Whatever the case is, a brother can bring you some correction without you getting so offensive all the time Yeah, because you want to change. You want to grow. The only people that have a problem with you speaking out against sin and reading the word of God and things of that nature are those that are still in love with their sin and they're not ready to repent and fully surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. They want to kind of dib and dabble a little bit. So here's one of the verses that we may even get on here tonight. Somebody might try to launch at us, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to take this thing apart. Amen. Amen. It's Matthew chapter seven, one through five. Mm. Look at what it says. It says, do not judge so that you won't be judged Mm. for with the judgment you use you will be judged and with the measure you use it will be measured to you Mm -hmm. why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye but do not notice the log in your own eye how can you say to your brother how could you say that to your brother let me take the speck out of your eye and look there's a log in your eye hypocrite first take the log out of your eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Mm. That's not saying that you don't speak out against sin. It's simply saying that if you see a brother in adultery and you know that you're cheating on your wife, you need to repent first before you call yourself trying to correct him. Because we have this nature as people to where it's okay for me to do something, Mm. but you better not do it. Right. You sin, but I make mistakes. 
It's no right. big deal yeah, when I do it. Yeah. Look, look at what he says here in Romans chapter two, real quick. And it goes with this. Therefore, you who teach someone else, do you teach yourself? Mm. He asked a question. You who preach against stealing, do you steal? You who say that one should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? Mm. You who say we shouldn't do idolatry, are you in sacrilege? So it's saying practice what you preach. That's yeah. what Matthew 7 is talking about. It's not saying that we can't correct our brother and sister who's in error. It's just simply right. saying that if you're in hypocrisy yourself, you better pretty much, how could you stop somebody else from drowning if you can't swim yeah. yourself? Well, I mean, go ahead. I mean, uh, I mean, a simple question is like, why aren't we, why aren't we taking judgment? Why don't you, why don't you want to go to the next level? Why don't you want to, um, I mean, if we all, if we all read the same good book, question. if we all read the same book mm. from the Genesis to Exodus, and you tell me one thing that's in that book and I get offended, there's something wrong. Come why, on. why aren't I listening to the word that comes out of Gerard's mouth and say, Jeremy, you, or, or whatever Lou said, Jeremy, you like wine, but now there's, now there's four glasses a day and you're drinking wine because you have a, a uh, because you're in a bad mood. And instead of praying the, the, uh, the bad mood out. So the, the simple question is, why aren't, if we're reading the same book and my brother comes to me and says, Hey, Jeremy, do this out of the, out of the, out of the Holy scriptures. Why am I get? here's the question. Why am I getting offended? Hey, right. I, would like, I would like to touch on that. I believe Gerard already, am I too loud? I sound loud on my end, but I believe the re the re this is the reason this is the answer to me is because they're still in bondage. That's why mm. they don't understand the power of God. They haven't been set free from sin. That's right. So, so, so when you, so when that word uh, righteous judgment or being corrected, uh, uh, of your sin comes up, they're reminded of what they're still struggling with because they never, the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom and they're oh. not experiencing that freedom. So, yep. so the moment we talk about sin or, 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 or righteous judgment, the first thing they think about is what they're struggling with and they haven't been set free from that due to lack of fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Because when you Amen. connect with God and you're in the secret place, it's impossible for you to stay bound to sin still. There's freedom in the Lord. Mm. And, and I want to touch on this scripture in verse 5 in uh, Matthew 7, 5, where it says, okay. it, says hip, it says, hypocrite, first yep. remove the, the plank from your own eye. My question is, how long is the plank supposed to stay in the eye? Because I still I hear believers always talking about remove the plank. Uh, the, you got to remove the plank from your own eye. How long is that plank gonna stay in your eye? And and, and then it says remove that so you could so you so you could what? And then you will see clearly to mm. remove the speck from somebody else's eye. So by now we should be in a position where we could move the speck from other people's eyes because the blind can't lead the blind. You see, so we shouldn't have the plank in our eye forever. Should we have Amen. it in our eyes forever, or should it be removed by now? Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I think it goes with what Jeremy said, though, is your desire to grow? Is your desire to 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 um, advance in the kingdom and mature and grow in righteous righteousness and holiness? Because if that's the case, you won't have a problem taking that. But what we do often is we deflect and say, well, OK, well, you're doing this mm -hmm. or you're doing that. But the thing is this one thing I learned to do, and I learned this actually from my marriage. Seriously. My wife told me something one time that was a really hard, ugly truth. And I really did not. If, if looks could kill, like the, <laughs> the look I gave her. But what I did was I had to humble myself and be a man. I took a step back and I asked myself, I said, is what she's saying true? Mm. I got out of my feelings. I moved my emotion size and asked myself, was it true? And you know what? She was absolutely telling the truth. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I took the information, I applied it to life. Right. And I made the proper corrections. Um, and one of the things that people do is like they said, they say, well, oh, it's not loving to judge or to talk to tell someone that they need to repent. Mm. I beg to differ. I think it's not loving to not do so. Amen. Amen. How is it Amen. love to see someone in a burning building or to see someone on their way to hell and for you to not say something? Mm. That's not love. And what people don't understand is it takes real love to preach the gospel, especially in today's world and in today's culture, and even in some of these so-called churches, because they've become so watered down and religious. That's right. I'm, I'm telling you, and they're not preaching the same gospel that Jesus and the apostles preached. It's, it's There's no way you're going to tell me they, they didn't get, listen, Jesus and the apostles were not murdered for preaching love, 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 love. Mm, come on. They were That's murdered true. for preaching love and truth. The Amen. world hates truth. 
The enemy hates light. Anytime light shines on darkness, what does it do? It exposes. Come on. Versus. The enemy That's doesn't right. want to be exposed. His mm. works don't want to be exposed. So it takes love for me as a man of God to go to family members, to go to friends, people at work, even people in the church and go and tell them those hard truths to share the gospel, to bring about correction and love. It takes mm. love to do that, knowing Amen. that I'm probably going to get talked about, That's right. hated, mistreated, and pretty soon, and in most countries, even murdered for it. Mm. That takes love to do. Amen. That's true. Amen. Well, the first thing that came to my mind was the devil's one job for, for the church is to keep the church lukewarm. If you can keep the church, <laughs> if you can, if you can keep the church lukewarm, mm. then you know what well, we all know. What Revelation says that that makes the devil knows what makes God's stomach turn is mm -hmm. just to keep the church just lukewarm, and and like uh, just growing up in sports, you know, we all play sports. None right. of us are prof none of us are professionals because of one huge difference. We didn't take it that seriously mm. and, and we weren't dedicated to life. <laughs> wow, and life. So, so the one difference between a powerful church and an unpowerful church is they take it. They took the, They take Jesus's walk seriously. I'm no professional. I, um, we all played basketball and I knew, I knew quickly who worked harder than me and who didn't work harder than me. And the, and the, and the people who worked, it showed and the power of God shows in churches, you can have lights and, and you can have a lot of talk. But the power of God is like what Gerard says. As soon as the police stations start closing, mm. I mean, Come that's on. where that's I want to get to. That's revival. Yeah. That's, that's where I want to get to. And uh, I mean, I'm nowhere near that. I'm trying to dedicate my life to, to, to uh, Christ and him fully and him crucified and, and me crucified in my, in my flesh. Mm -hmm. But um, that's, that's the difference between a pro and an amateur is they gave fully to their sport. Fully. All right. Amen. Fully. So, 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 I, so I believe the Lord is, you know, uh, raising up people. God is he's raising up lions. You know, the Bible says, be bold as a lion, but then what? Be humble as a dove. That's right. You know, so, but, but watch this. If you guys have your Bibles, if, if you have your phone, whatever you have, go to uh, Ephesians 5.11 really quick. Come on. Blessings, it, everybody who's joined us in the amen. chat. Good to see everybody. I can't see anything there. They should invent something second. like where you can see in two glasses. They should invent something. <laughs> Jeremy, why do you have on two glasses? Oh, they should invent something where you can read and you can see far. You okay. can't see a thing. Make sure you guys share this live. I, for, I don't know why it, when I posted it, it was um for, for my friends only, but I changed the settings right now to uh to public. So there we go. It's public right now. But let, let's go to Ephesians uh, 5.11. You know, it's time to start to speak up against sin and then take action. You know, there, there, there might be uh, many uh, preachers, pastors, apostles, prophets, they may preach against sin, but are we taking action? You know, especially in your churches, are you are you cutting that sin? Are you letting people to continue to be in fellowship with you and not expose it and not talk about it like the Bible says to do? We got to expose these things. Let's go to Ephesians 5.11. 5, it says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose, expose them. Does oh. it say does it say be quiet? Does it say show grace? Don't say not. It says expose them. Why? Come on. This is love right here. This is yeah. love. Expose them for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by what? By the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. What is light? The Bible says in, in, in the book of Psalms that his word is a light to our path. You see what I'm saying? So the word of God is the entrance of light. The Bible also says. So when we speak the word of God, it sheds light on darkness and yeah. people, people will, uh, they'll be convicted as we release the truth of the living God. Now, right here, as we see in verse 11, it says expose the works of darkness, have no fellowship with it at all. You can see, so I don't know if you guys want to, you know, touch on, on that verse right there, but. Well, also like in second, I knew it was at one of the end of the epistle, second Timothy. I didn't memorize mm -hmm. it, but it's at one of the small second Timothy at the end says, He's talking about a guy and he says, you too, be on guard, 2 Timothy 4, 4, 15. You too should be on guard against him because he strongly opposes the message. So it's That's not right. about, it's not about opposing me and my views. That's it's, right. And he warned against him. He said, he said, be on guard against him. So why in the Bible is it, is somebody noticing somebody and saying, be on guard against that person. That's not judging. That's just protecting. Exactly. I think a key word of the key word, uh, 
the key word of judging one key words is protection. Mm. If you, if you're on guard again, he's, he's actually saving, he's saving fellow Christians. He's saying, be on guard against this guy. Be on guard. He has, he has f- fled from the faith. Be on guard. It's, it's a benefit. Judging is a benefit. There's protection. If you judge your friends or if you judge people who you hang around with, you're protecting your own self, your kids, you're protecting their circle. Amen. And, 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 and for me, I get called judgmental often. Mm. And now I'm at the point to where, because I know the truth, right. I say, amen. Thank God. It, it, here's the thing <clears throat> about that verse Lewis just read and, 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 and what uh, Jeremy just said. As believers, we are to absolutely have no tolerance for anything that sends people to hell while promising them heaven. Amen. We could absolutely have no tolerance. We are to cry out against wickedness. We're not supposed to hide our light. That's right. We're not supposed to hide our lamps. We are called to push back darkness. This is a war. And if we really care about winning souls, we'll Mm. be in prayer and fasting and we'll be preaching the gospel. Here's the thing. Everybody says they're preaching the gospel, but they don't want to talk about sin. Mm. It's impossible to preach the gospel if you're not talking about sin. That's right. Oh, Jesus died for you. Well, why did he have to? Right. Because I'm sinful. It's not that I've sinned in my life. It's all I've ever done. I was an enemy of God since the time I was born. But God in his own love and grace and mercy left the Mm. throne of heaven. He came down and he put on the seat of Abraham. He put on flesh and blood. He came in a likeness of sinful man. Mm. And my Mm. sins, your sins were put on him. And he was destroyed and crushed by the heavenly father so that we can have redemption and his righteousness and holiness was now transferred to those of us who believe and surrender to him and announce him as Lord. It is absolutely our job. You cannot preach the gospel without crying out against sin. It's not possible. What did he die for? And that's our job. And let me tell you something. If you don't tell people the truth, if you don't speak the truth because of self-preservation, because you don't want to lose your job Mm. or you don't want to be inconvenienced or hated, there's blood on your hands. Mm, I'm telling you, there's blood on your hands. Here, let me Mm. read this in Ezekiel chapter three. And it says, son of man, I have made you a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore heard the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die and Mm. thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. And the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require on. on your hands. Yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness, not from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered your soul. Again, when a righteous man doeth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou has not given him warning. He shall mm. die in his sin and his righteousness, which he had done, shall not be remembered. That's talking about a brother in Christ right there. That's right. It Amen. says a righteous man who stumbled and you didn't give him warning. He's going to die in his sin and his righteousness is gone. Oh. Amen. We See, the thing about it is we have to continue in the faith. You can't backslide and think that you're going to enter into the eternity with the Lord. Right. We got to watch out. Check this word out right here. I actually read this the other day. This is even more confirmation through the scriptures in uh, Luke 24, verse 47. And th- these are the words of Jesus. Look what he said. And, he, and, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Come on. Right th- <sighs> what did he say? What did he say to preach out of everything in the Bible? About faith, about love, mercy, grace, about your tithes and your offering. No, he said, preach repentance. That's why Jesus died on the cross. That's the main gospel. Jesus is saying, listen, I died for your sins. Everybody, Everybody heard that, but only through the Holy Spirit, you can receive a revelation and truly understand what it means that Jesus died for your sins. And a lot of, a lot of Christians may be saying Jesus died for their sins. And to be honest with you, I look at their fruit. And I see that they're still children of the devil, to be honest with you. Mm. They are bound to sin still. They are still fornicators. They're still committing adultery. They're still bound to pornography. They're still in the clubs. They're still smoking huh. marijuana. Yeah. But then you're, you're still in church. Where is the fruit? And you think you're saved. You go to church and you worship, but then you're in the world singing worldly carnal songs. 
and you think you're saved because you're ignorant of what the Bible says. You see what I'm saying? You got to know That's what right. is the will of God. Go to the word and see, is God angry with that? Does God accept that? That's why the Bible says in Romans 12 too, do not be conformed to this world. Mm. That's but be right. transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be separated. And many Christians don't renew their mind, so they don't know the perfect That's will right. of God because they neglect mm. Spending time in the Bible, they just believe what their pastor says. They feel good. They clap. They 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 think they're feeling. Oh, I felt the Holy Ghost today. And then you go back to living in the world until mm. next week, and you only experience Jesus for one hour if your church is really you know moving like that yeah. in the spirit. Mm -hmm. You see, right. Jesus. Uh, what comes to my mind? Jesus didn't hate the Pharisees. He hated that they were leading the little ones astray. I mean, it says in the word, it's better for a millstone to be put. He really loves the young believer. He loves the young pure believer that 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 all they want is to be at the feet of Jesus. I, I mean, what did Jesus tell? Jesus judged Martha and said, Martha, you're spending too much. Like what, you know, Lou said last week about baby. Jesus didn't, not judging. He told Martha, Martha, you're, you're spending too much time over here busy. Right. You're not praying enough. Jesus didn't hate the Pharisees. He hated that. He hated that they were leading the little ones astray. That's why he told them, you are, you're doing what your father is doing. He said, you don't, your language, you know, he said this in, um, in John seven, he said, you don't understand my language. It's not clear to you. You can't hear what I'm saying. He's mm. pretty much saying they only hear the language of the devil. He, he really came against the Pharisees because the Pharisees would, um, would, would go five miles to save a convert and make them just as worse as them. Uh, just, um, uh, 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 uh on the outward, on the right. outward, uh, on the outward saved, on the inward, not keeping any of the laws, uh, uh, but putting a lot of uh, strength on um, strength on believers. So Jesus, check us out real quick. Here's my point. Jesus did not hate the Pharisees. He hated that he would, he hated the Pharisees would lead the little ones astray. He was always, if you noticed it, he was always merciful to the sinners, mm. the, um, the woman stoned, the, the man born blind. You weren't born to sin. He said, don't go sin anymore. You have seven husbands. Don't go sin anymore. But to, but to the Pharisees, he said, you're going to die in your sins. He says, you're not like Abraham. You're a liar. You're not like Abraham, your father. You're like your father, your devil. Mm -hmm. Your language, Come all on. you could hear is lies. So he, he really judged harshly the Pharisees, and he was really merciful and kind to the sinner. And he was all, um, you can tag it on this one here. He was also harsh on his disciples. He said, how long am I going to be with mm. you? Or, you know, why can't you heal? So he was harsh on people who could make, here's the key. It just came to me now, download. He was harsh on people who can make a difference. Right. And Good he even rebuked one. What was the, what was the one? He, uh, Peter. Remember he called Peter a devil or whatever he said? <laughs> he rebuked uh, get, his disciple. Get behind me. Yeah. He, re he rebuked Peter because he wasn't mindful of the things of God. He was yeah. being Go earthly on. minded. Yeah. But here's, here's, so, so I love the Holy Spirit because you set me up beautifully, Jeremy, for, for, <laughs> for what I was going to even share in the first place. Ellie, you know, you, Ellie. you know why he couldn't stand the Pharisees? Because yes, a lot of the things they said were true according to the law, but his issue with them was that they were hypocrites. Mm. And they didn't examine themselves. Come on. See, here's another part of judgment. We like calling out sin in other people's life. We see what's wrong with everybody else, but we're completely blind to what's mm. going on with ourselves. Come yes. on, right? Amen. That's, that's why the scripture that's says, that's why the scripture says, examine yourselves that's to right. see if you be in the faith. But what we like to do is we like to examine other people, mm. but we don't, don't want to see before I can, that's, that's also what Matthew 7 is talking about. Before I could come to Lewis and sweep in front of his door, I need to sweep in front of mine first. Mm. This is a daily thing, right? So I need to examine myself daily to make sure that I am in the faith, to make sure that I haven't wavered, to make right. sure that I'm not in idolatry. Mm. Before I go to my brother and I'm, or my sister, and I'm always trying to constantly point the finger Amen. at what they have going on, Amen. right? Amen. So we need to examine ourselves. Also, what about this verse here? You got to make a judgment for this one right here. Mm. Check this out. Beware of false prophets mm. who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are savage wolves. You will know them by their fruit. That's right. Mm. Grapes aren't gathered from thorns or figs from thistles, are they? For me to be able to identify a false prophet, obviously, I need the Holy Spirit. I need discernment. I need to know God's word and understand doctrine. Mm. 
Mm. But after I identify him, I need to be willing to make a judgment and say that that man is or woman is a false prophet. Mm. That man is a false apostle. That man is a false teacher. That's a false brother. All these things are mentioned in the scriptures. And it says in the last days, many shall rise. And we are in the last days, but we don't want to have that conversation because we've been Mm. told that that's mean. You know what's even meaner? Allowing people to be led to hell by a false teacher. That's even Mm. meaner. Come on. Brother wow. Toby, blessings. Brother Quavis, blessings. Quavis, yeah, we see you. Joining us, brother. Mm. Tori Johnson, we see you. Kimber, what? what's the camp? Cabrero. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, so I, I wanted to touch on that because a lot of people, um, if, if a prophet or, or someone's given a word or, or they make a mistake, people are quick to say, oh, that's a false prophet. You know, we're not God. Sometimes people, sometimes you just miss it. Sometimes people miss a, a prophetic word or or maybe they, they mess up when they're preaching the word. Maybe, you know, they don't mean to twist the scripture on purpose. But if you're sitting under somebody and then you start to go home and you study the Bible and, and then you say, um, okay, well, this is not lining up with what this man or woman is saying. Right. Then you can identify that that is a false prophet. And they're twisting script, a false prophet, a teacher, whatever. They're twisting the scriptures for their own benefit. That's when you could call them false, not just because they might have made a, you know, a mistake, given a prophetic word or here and there, you know, they butchered a scripture. But when you're sitting under this person and and they're continuously twisting the scripture for their own benefit and you're reading the word and you're getting the truth, Mm -hmm. you have the right to say, listen, you you are false. You are a liar. You are false. Mm. And whatever you're saying is not God. You're doing that to benefit your own kingdom. You know, oh, yeah. so to me, that's what a false, you know, teacher or prophet right. is someone that they, as we're sitting under them and we could discern like they're just twisting this every every mm. week. It's been right. months now. <laughs> but so, it's, 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 it's also not just um, twisting the scriptures. That's a part of it. But it's also the fact that they're not practicing what they preach. Mm-hmm. So they're preaching something, but then they go live another way. Right. That's why it says you should know them by their fruit. Fruits. That was his issue with the Pharisees. That was his issue with many false prophets. Yeah, you say the right things, but you're not living it. Mm, come on. You yeah. have no desire or conviction to walk in that yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, sure. You got to make a judgment to identify false teachers. Yeah. You have to make a judgment to to identify who's good company and bad company. The Bible yeah. talks about bad company, wicked mm, company, on. right? You got to make judgments to do those things. Yeah. You got to make judgments every day. I hope some mm-hmm. of y'all. You know, if you're not married and, and you're a born again believer and you're looking for a godly spouse, you better make a judgment there, too. That's right. Yeah. Judge, find, yeah. find you a man or a woman that loves God. That, that's a judgment that needs to be made. These are yeah. all judgments. That's yeah. Right. And then the, and then um, speaking about judgments. Um, I think we're talking about like you know, protecting the body, but also judging is also there's benefits to it. So. It's not Come just on. a scary, it's, it's not a scary thing to have to, to be a judge. So how can you fulfill God's promise where it says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there. So if you want two or three people around you and they have to be what number, the key is what they have to be what in, in my name. Mm, That's right. You have to be right. gathering in his name, your heart. Ha- and it's not about the, out, like, like Gerard said, it's not about the, it's not about the, the Pharisees looking good on the outside, but, but they're circumcised and they're not following any of the law. They just uh, say that they love Jesus, but, but they're not following God's way. Um, so you have to judge the two or three are gathered in my name. So you're actually missing out on benefits. How can two walk together unless they're in unity. So you're missing the benefit. God will never be around your group of two or three people. It's a fact. God will never be around your group of two or three people. If Mm. you don't judge who's around you and you make good judgments to have friends around you that are in his name, then here's the benefit. I will be there. If you want the Lord of all Lords, the King of all Kings to be in your midst where, where, where he defeats enemies, when you worship him, walls come down, when you, when you break jars like Gideon did, armies disperse. When you praise God and, and Jehoshaphat and, and, mm. and, and, and armies, armies abandon them before, if you want him to be in your, if you want him to be with you, you have to judge people around you that they're in his name. It's a benefit of, of judging. It's a benefit yeah. of judging. You set me up. You set me up for something good now, because now uh, there's an illustration in the Bible. This is uh, in Second Timothy, what is it, 2. It's uh, 2 Timothy 2.16. Watch this. And it goes down to 18. And then I'll jump to 22. It says, avoid worthless, foolish talk, 
that mm. only leads to more godless behavior. Mm. This kind of talk spreads. And he's, he's addressing the church. This kind of talk spreads like cancer. Mm. Then it says, as in the case of Hymenius and Philetus, if I said the name right. Now, look mm. at these no. two guys. They no. were spreading false things in the church, mm. which is sin. If someone's lying and you twist in scripture, that's sin. And what's the Bible say? It starts to spread like cancer. And when, when the pastors don't deal with that in the church, it starts, like it says, it spreads like cancer. And then it affects other people in the body mm -hmm. of Christ, whether it's greed, whether it's fornication, whether it's homosexuality, and then it mm -hmm. affects others. And look at this, number 18, verse 18. It says, they have left the path of truth, claiming that the resurrection of the dead has already occurred. They said the resurrection, of the, it already happened. In this way, they have turned some people from the faith. So many pastors are not handling sin in their church mm. and it's affecting everyone else around them, especially babes in the faith. And listen, you could be a babe in the faith, even if you've been saved for 20 years, if you don't spend time with Jesus, you're still a baby. You're still on milk. Right. You see what I'm, I'm saying? So, <laughs> and look what it said. Some people, they, they turn away from the faith. Now let's jump down to 22. And it says, run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living faithfulness love and peace enjoy companionship which means hold on, fellowship. hold on Luke. what does it say it, it, it says stay there and think about it or did it say run it says run from anything mm. that stimulates joyful lust instead pursue righteous living right faithfulness mm. love and peace enjoy companionship of those who call on the name of the lord with a mm. pure heart amen you, that's who we are in fellowship with i want to be in fellowship with these two brothers and i believe quavis dropped it in there if I didn't discern that they have good fruit, that they're not calling on the name of the Lord Amen. with a pure That's heart. A judgment. Do That's they right. make mistakes? Yes. Do I make mistakes? Duh. Absolutely. Do we sin? Yes. Cause the, but we don't live in sin. That's a big, that's a whole nother podcast episode right there. I think Amen. we should do that one soon. Uh, Amen. But, I repent. But, but let me tell you, but let me tell you what they did with these two brothers. They end up kicking them out the church. Get out of this fellowship. That's in first Corinthians five, five, go there. You guys could go there in your own time. And I believe I, I, I brought that verse up last week is that if you really love somebody after a while, after counseling them, after laying hands on them and praying with them, mm. after, after sitting down with these, these are believers, you're sitting down with these people, they say they love Jesus, but then you notice they don't have fruit, of, there's no fruits of repentance, you got to let them go and give them to the devil himself mm. that their soul might be saved. That's love. And it seems hard, but it's not hard at all. You know why? Because that's what the scripture says. And if it's too hard, let's call on the Holy Spirit to help us. And that goes for anybody. You got to shouldn't be hard. let them go. Amen. Shouldn't be yeah. hard. Um, real quick, um, Angie Lopez, we see you, sis. God bless. Um, we'll um, we'll hit up your uh, prayer request here in a minute. Um, Sister Jasmine's right. First Corinthians chapter five, verse five. It's talking about excluding the little leaven, leaven if the whole lump. Um, one of the things that you said, Lou, that hit me is is mm. see the church has got it backwards. So here's what we do. Mm -hmm. We get behind the pulpit in the church and we love talking about the world. Right. Mm. We like talking about Lil Nas X. Yes, he's an abomination. We like talking about Joe Biden. Right. We like talking about Kamala Harris. And yes, they are evil. They're wicked. But here's the thing. They ain't saved. Right. That's how they should be conducting themselves. They're still children of Adam. Mm. They're not born again. They don't have That's a right. new nature. They don't have the Holy Spirit. Their heart hasn't been regenerated. So what we want to do is we want to bash the world every day mm. while we do no evangelism. Come on. Right. And then we got a brother on the worship team. That's living in sexual sin. Come on. Or we got brothers that's teaching or, 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 or right. ushering, whatever it is they're whatever. doing, they're living in sin. And we don't want to say anything because we've been told that, oh, we just got to show some love. No, that that's not love. Like you said, we need to deal with that and we need to address that because here's what babes do in the Lord. They don't examine themselves according to Christ or they don't measure themselves by the scriptures. Mm. What they do is new coming in. They compare themselves to others who say that they've been walking with the Lord for a, a, a time. That's why the scriptures is those that compare themselves by themselves are not wise. But what they do is they look at that brother over there, that sister, and they say, well, okay, they're saved. I heard they've been here for a while. That must be how a Christian conducts themselves. Yeah. That's why it's important to deal with those things. That's why it's important for those of us, excuse me, that have been walking with the Lord. We need to watch our conduct as well. Amen. Yeah. So, yeah.
Well, let's talk about the let's talk about the Will Smith thing. Hey, so, Sister Jeanette, <laughs> blessings. It's so listen. It's so easy to put. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's claimed to be a Christian, but it's so easy to put something like that. And Manning say. Oh, well, well, yeah. He probably is, he's probably not, not by his fruit. We can probably judge that. Amen. But it's it's so easy to. Let's just talk about the example of that, though, not him specifically, but sure, the example. Sure. The example of someone messing up. It it um um it makes us look better when we put. I mean, automatically, even like uh uh, uh when we put someone down, we automatically are what? We automatically are, 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 we're raising, if we kick someone down, we automatically look better. And then it gives us a little more leeway to mess up a little more. Mm-hmm. We expect a guy like Will Smith to be this awesome Christian. We know he probably don't, you know, you know, uh, I, I don't know, whatever his life is, but we expect him to be, we have a, we have an easy time to knock him off the pedestal and we expect him to have high standards, but yet, but yet, but yet we claim to be whatever, part of a church or a leadership. And then when someone dares to tell us, Hey, Jeremy, your mouth is too sharp. Jeremy, you hurt someone's feelings, which people told me for years. And finally, as I'm getting close, when I got closer to God three or four years ago, I started hearing it. My mm-hmm. language was God's language. So when God spoke to me, I heard the language. It wasn't lie anymore. Like, the, like my, like my old father-in-law, the devil, my new father's mm-hmm. language is not lie anymore. So when I heard the language of Jeremy, you're this Jeremy, you're that I started mm-hmm. hearing that. So it's so easy to put Will Smith down off the pedestal. We expect him to be better. But then when someone says, Jeremy, you got to do this, you don't tell me what to do. So our standards should be as, as of those who are publicly and they, they, they make themselves look foolish and we can kick him down so easily because it makes us look a little better. Oh, I don't got to pray as much. I can slip up because he slipped up. So I notice people who do bad. So I look better, but we should have higher standards than of those that be, people who we don't know. No, we should absolutely. start hearing. We should start hearing. Yeah. So there's, abs- I think what I'm hearing you say is there should absolutely be a difference between the body of Christ and those that are in the world. Like I said, the gospel and the faith has been so watered down and belittled and contaminated that there are actually people that believe that Will Smith is saved. Right. Come on, Come man. On. Let's be serious. We it's fruit. That 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 should be a really fruit. easy one for us, right? I mean, fruit, let's fruit. Let, let's be serious. That man ain't no more saved than Adolf Hitler. But here's that's the right. thing: that's a righteous judgment. Yeah, right. that's not a judgment. That's a righteous judgment. It's fruit. Yeah, it, I mean, fruit. it's 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 just real. He, he he's too caught up in the world. He cares about the things. Maybe of the world, he but... got saved in the last couple of days though, because what he did. Maybe he got. Maybe he. Maybe he did. We don't know. No, listen, th- listen. I I my my I hope everybody gets saved. Right. Maybe in the last because two days. because yeah. that's God's heart as well. That's God's will. He knows better. You yeah. know that a lot of them ain't right. He says narrow is the way, narrow is the gate, and he says there are few who find it. Few. So yes, he died for everybody, but that doesn't mean everybody's going to tap into that salvation. That's right. Amen. Everybody's not going to tap into that. That's God's will. He definitely wants that. He doesn't want anybody to perish, and that's my will as well. I don't want anybody to perish in no way, shape, or form. Don't don't mistake me. Um, I would love everybody to go to heaven, but we know that that is simply just not the case. There are many that are deceived um, by Satan. But see, this is why we have to put a difference between holy and unholy, because when we don't do that, we blur the line. That's right. So now you got people thinking that people are shepherds of Christ, that people are, are, are Christ ministers and they're not. You got people thinking that people are, are, are children of God and they're not. It's been so skewed and the line has been so blurred. Mm because of hypocrisy and, and, and watering down the gospel and things of that nature. And, and, and here's the thing, like you said, I want to touch on something you said earlier, Jeremy, because that was a beautiful point. And I actually found some scripture for it. Awesome. Where you talked about the child of God, a godly man or a godly woman would want some correction. Mm, come on. Right. They, they, they accept that because they know that, that that's going to make them better. That's going to help them grow and mature in Christ. Amen. But here it is right here. I got Psalm 141 verse five. And it says this, listen, this is what, this is what the, the, the author is saying. Let a righteous man strike me. That is a kindness. Mm. Let him rebuke me. That is oil to my head. Mm. Mm. My head will not refuse it for my prayer will stand against the deeds of evildoers. He's saying, listen, strike me. Rebuke me if I'm wrong, if I'm walking in the evil Come way, right. because I may not always see it. I don't want to be in righteousness and I don't want to be in sin. Listen, I don't want to be in fellowship 
hear me when I say this, guys. I don't want to be in fellowship with anybody who's going to tickle my ears. Amen. I need to be in fellowship with some brothers and sisters that's going to hold me accountable. All right. That's, that's right. going to correct me, rebuke me if need be. Don't talk about me behind my back now. Pray for a brother. Right. right? We don't mm -hmm. want none of that going on. But what I'm saying is you need people around you that are going to help you move towards Christ, not away from them. And the scary you thing is that if you don't listen, God, God will do that. Right. And that's a, that's a little harder. And then what did Nebuchadnezzar go? Nebuchadnezzar, after, after he was, however long he was out in the field, seven times, whatever it says, seven seasons or seven times, he mm -hmm. said, God, God did this to flush the evil out of me. God, God humbled me to make me the man I want. So if we're not listening to people, and this is what Gerard said in the beginning of the, of the show, if you don't listen to people around you, now here we go, um, people are around you to help you. Now, if we don't listen to people around us, God will. God will do it to us. And we don't want that. To, we don't want a Nebuchadnezzar experience to flush out the evil that we could not see time and time again. That's right. That's so right. You don't want, Amen. you don't want God to step in either because it's happened to a lot of us. Right. And if, yep. if we're stubborn, God's way is a little harder than listen, listening to a couple friends like these guys, Jeremy, slow, Jeremy, pray more, Jeremy. You're, you're, yep. you're, uh, um, uh, uh, I'd rather listen to a couple of guys who are a little harder than God saying, I want your attention. I want you to be who you want, who I want you to be. You're not going to listen. Now I'm going to do a Nebuchadnezzar to you. I'm going to force you to be who I'm not force you, but I'm going to put you through a season. If you don't learn after that, then, then, then you're probably destined for. Amen. But that's right. why the word says, if you would judge yourself, you won't be judged by God. Like you said, examine yourself. You, you said, that's you it. said, examine yourself at the beginning. That's right. it. That's right. Thank you, Mary Bell. Uh, what is it? Mary Bell Hernandez and everyone uh, we see so far, like about nine people shared this. So we just we appreciate that. Once again, for those tuning in right now, we're just talking about can a believer judge? And, and this message is directed towards believers, basically, that say, I, I, I love Jesus. And those that, you know, go to the church, even though we are the, the church, you know what I mean? We're going to discuss all that later on, too, in a different mm -hmm. podcast. But check this out. You know, it's, it's better to... Um, tell someone, listen, you're not doing the right thing. You're not actually following the word of God. You're actually walking in disobedience. It's better to tell them now because in hell it's too late. Mm, that's right. And, 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 and you know what? I, I, I truly believe this. It might be, I don't know if it's in the scripture now, but I believe in, in hell they're going to be tormented and reminded of what certain people told them. I believe that's part of the torment down there. It ain't, it ain't just the fire. It ain't just the flames, but it's mm. them remembering people that's that, that preach the gospel to them to repent from their sins and turn from their wicked ways. I'm talking to, to believers. I'm not talking to unbelievers right now because sure. the Bible says you prophesy out of my name. You cast out devils in my name. You went to church every week. I never knew you depart from me. Get away from me. You didn't spend no time with me. You didn't practice righteous living. And, and I don't know you. There was no fellowship between us. When you, and people say, I have a, uh, people say I have a, a relationship That's with good. Jesus. Amen. People say I have a, a relationship with Jesus my own way. But how, how do you have a relationship with someone you don't spend time with? You have zero relationship. Jesus had a relationship with the father. And that's that. that I, wa I want to um look at Jesus and practice what he did. He woke up every day and spent time with the father. That's a relationship. Mm. How can I say I have a, a relationship with my wife if she's working and I'm over here doing my thing in the studio, recording tracks, and we never actually sit down and, and, and talk and, and mm -hmm. eat together and have a heart to heart conversation and laugh together. I hear her voice. She hears my voice. We have, we have no relationship if we don't take the, uh, the time to do that. We could be in the same house right here with no relationship. How many of us have the Holy spirit and no relationship with him? That's why people get so offended easily when someone talks the way we do about righteous judgment by living holy because you have zero intimacy with the Holy ghost and you walk in defeat. But today we're going to pray that, you know, your eyes be opened up. Don't get offended with this message. We're here because we love you. I could be doing something else right now. I could be in the studio recording some music, but we pray before we come on here and we just want to share the truth with you guys. And if you get offended, you know, I'm not sorry for that at all because I'm we, I just want to preach the word of God. I am not sorry for preaching the gospel because Jesus never said, I'm sorry for preaching the truth. This truth sets you free. This is good for you. Praise the Lord. Let me touch on that a little real quick. Because you, you, you said it. a word if you're offended. That that that's a that's a part of the problem with with us not being willing to judge mm -hmm. and make judgments on especially false teachers. And I say that because this false gospel and these false teachers, 
has made it see what they've done in the churches they help to replace that offends me well mm. that convicts me with that offends me yep. conviction is a good thing if you're convicted by the word of god that's coming forth see now that word has been thrown out the window and it's been replaced with i'm offended mm. so anytime the word of god does what it's supposed to do because it is the sword of the spirit and it cuts you now all of a sudden you're in your feelings you want one warm, warm, fuzzy messages all the time. Come on. Well, I'm sorry. Those warm, fuzzy messages, do, they don't uh, transfer you from death to life. Right. They don't pull you out of the grave. That's they don't K pull you K out of sin. K Burrell just said in the comments, she said, Paul said he is glad to offend if it leads to repentance. <laughs> Come on, sis. <laughs> Amen. There you go. Tap Come in. Yeah, so yeah. so this is what it's saying. Listen, but it's not <laughs> offense that you're feeling. I want to I want to eliminate that lie you're being convicted by the holy spirit and if you can be convicted of sin thank god for it that right. means that you're not a reprobate that means that god hasn't given you over to those things because there is some i'm telling you right now there are some that you can no longer reason with anymore there are some that you can't talk to anymore they've Come been on. given over to that sin they've become a reprobate mm -hmm. evil is good and good is now evil let me just read this real quick Jude chapter one, verse three. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith mm. which was once delivered unto the saints. So right now he's even saying they don't even deliver the faith anymore. But listen right. to this. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm, yeah. Come on. Yeah. You got to contend for the faith. It's right. important yeah. that we contend for the faith because there's so much lies. There's so much That's nonsense right. out here clouding people's minds. Yeah. Man. Yeah. All that, all that. All that. I don't know. No, no, no. I'm just saying hello to Sister Jeanette. Oh, Jeanette. We'd like Jeanette. to acknowledge all of our brothers and sisters. In hey, Sister Jeanette. All right, yeah. yeah. Hey, man, you know, as Gerard was speaking, a, a scripture just jumped at me. See, hey, we flow in the Holy Spirit. This is what we're doing. So this is in, um, where is it? Let me see. This is in, in Romans, 20, uh, the first chapter, verse 24. Hey, Sweet Pea. Sweet Pea's in here? Yeah. <laughs> it said, so watch this. It says, in claiming, to, in claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious ever-living God, they wow. worshiped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles, right? Come on. So, so what did God do? So God abandoned them to do whatever wow. shameful things their hearts desired. As a, as a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. And we know as, as you, as you read down in that verse, you know, they turn into, in, into homosexuality and, and, you know, and uh, certain sins. But yeah. um, the whole thing is like what brother Gerard said, after a while, if you don't want to do anything with God and, and you don't want to be obedient, he'll just, he'll give you up. Yeah. yeah. You'll, even one of the scriptures says you'll, you'll call. I mean, you won't even find me That's unless right. you absolutely do it with a, a pure heart. God is looking for people to truly repent and turn from their wicked ways. People, I heard somebody say, oh, I'm repenting all the time. I don't repent all the time. I already repented. Come repent on. means you turn from your wicked ways. Yeah, I need yeah. forgiveness, but I don't need to repent no more. Repent means you were once a fornicator and you repented and you turn from your wicked ways. You're not creeping in the house with a, with a female every week or every other day no more. You know, repent means I was smoking weed and I've been set free for 12 years from that by the glory, by, by, by the power and the yeah. grace of, of the Lord God. That's a testimony. I'm boasting yeah. in Jesus right now. Yeah, you see, yeah. so... Yeah, God will give us up if, if yeah. we don't want to apply his word and, and, and be doers. That's what the Bible says, be doers of the word. They don't just say go to a, a building, be a yeah. doer of the word. And you don't, you can't That's do right. something that you don't read. That's right. Yeah. Even God confronted David. God confronted Saul. But the difference was David said, you're right. I am that man. I killed, Come on. I killed that man no. to have Come sex on. with that woman. Yeah. So he said, he said, I want your judgment. I don't want the judge. You know, now that you caught me, so his heart wasn't like, oh God, let me try to get away with it. Saul, Saul pleased the people. Saul did what the people did. You know, he, you know, God heard the sounds of the of the of the cattle, and uh, Saul pleased the people. David said, "I want to please you so bad. I want your judgment on me. That's, good, that's the only Jeremy. way I'm gonna get out of this." 
So wow, that's good. David, David did take it. He took it. He took it hard. And so like Lou said, you got to be able to, you got to be able to take the judgment. You got to be able to take God's um, also what God pours on you. And um, you know, like what Lou was saying about, mm. about trusting in this over that. He hated the Pharisees. He said, Pharisees, you trust in gold. You swear in go you swear on the gold in the altar rather mm. than the rather than trusting in the God who made the altar. You Come know, on. the Amen. incense and the uh and the perfumes. You you trust on the things. And the problem with the Pharisees is is they love the things of the world more than God. So, mm. you know, they like the big hats, the big tassels. They they want to be in charge, they want to be the only one. Um uh, reading the Bible, the only one to go into the, uh, whatever, you know, um, the, the, the holy is a holy with well, the high priest, the holy is a holy. Right. God broke that down. And what came to mind to when Lou said, who do you trust in? Uh, uh, God broke down the temple. So all you have to, do, so it doesn't become about, it doesn't come about anymore about traditions. It doesn't come about anymore about, right. um, uh, uh, doing things. It becomes about sitting at the feet of looking at Jesus' face and say, Jesus, Lord Jesus, what do you want me to do? What is your heart? What are you mm. saying for me to do to do today? Ooh. I want to be in your favor. I'm looking at you, Jesus, in your, in your face and saying, Jesus, what do you want Jeremy to do? Knock down the temple of my life and I will raise it up in three days again. Come on. Raise up Jesus on my life. Knock down, knock down the walls. That's good. Let me get I some got, of that. Go I ahead, got, Luke. Go ahead. Okay, just real quick. I like what Jeremy said about, okay, yeah, Jesus died on the cross, you know, and um, so people just think that sometimes um, if I'm at church and I'm and I'm serving. And, um, you know, I'm involved with the ministry and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm maybe cleaning the windows or toilets that I'm on mm. fire for the Lord. Mm. That don't, you, that don't necessarily mean you're on fire for God. If that was the case, then Jesus would have never rebuked, oh. uh, Martha for serving. You see what I'm saying? He, he said, yeah. listen, your sister chose the better thing when she came to my feet, because at the feet of mm. Jesus is revelation, there's direction, there's healing that takes place. Amen. So there's a lot of people that are serving in the ministry. Even some of you watching maybe right now. You're serving in your ministry, but you're still bound to sin. You're still depressed. You're still sad. There's no freedom, but you're doing all the work. You're at you're, you're constantly at church. It, this is a good time to say, Lord, am I spending enough time at your yeah. feet? Because I'm doing all this work, but it, it, this is becoming a, a burden to me. Uh -huh. So just because we're heavily involved in ministry does not mean that we're on fire for the Lord or even it's that true. we're on our way to heaven. Come on. Let's be honest. It's true. Let's be real. So. Right. It's, it's amazing. You, you both are having the same conversation. So notice what Jeremy said. He compared okay. the contrast between Saul and David. Well, what was the difference? Saul was called of God the same way David was. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. But what was the difference? David had a relationship with God. Mm. Saul didn't. No. Saul was all about the recognition, the praise of men. David was about intimacy with the Lord. Mm. which is why he was able to receive the correction. That's why it says, listen, listen, listen to what it says. Do not rebuke mockers or they will hate you. Mm. Rebuke the wise wow. and they will love you. Love you. Wise mm. people love and accept rebuke. <laughs> good one. Good one. David That's was good. wise, right? So he received the rebuke of the prophet because mm. he understood his relationship. It was about his relationship with God. Listen to what he said in Psalm 51. Mm. He said, listen, Lord, Against you have I sinned, God. Mm, he didn't say on. I ain't sinned against Beersheba or I didn't sin against uh, 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 Uriah. He says against you I have sinned, God, because it's about his relationship with God. I sinned against the Lord. Mm. In other words, Come listen, on. if you don't have an intimate relationship with God, you won't have very much godly integrity in your life. That's right. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Come I was on. telling a brother this earlier we were talking about being faithful to our wives. And I told him, listen, I'm faithful to my wife, even when she's not around. Mm, come on. I'm faithful to my wife, even in my thinking and in my heart. Mm. I'm faithful to her. Why? Because of my relationship with God. He sees Amen. and knows everything that everything. I do and everything that I think. And the relationship mm. that I have mm. with him and sure. want to continue to have I need to be consecrated. And there are things that I simply cannot partake in. So for me, I don't want to compromise my relationship with God. I don't want to lose my salvation. And I mm. sure enough don't want to lose my anointing. Amen. Amen. It's true. Amen. Good word. Good word. Right. He watches. He, omnipresent. He watches us. Amen. Watches Good and bad. So we, he's always with us in the bad times, but he's always watching us on the off times too. 
He's always right. they never leave us, never forsake us. So so he'll never leave us when we're going through troubles, but when we're just idle time, also he never leave us or forsake us. That's right. Amen. And that's a good word, Gerard. Good word. Amen. Good word. Good word. So I'm gonna drop the um the Zoom our Zoom information so you guys can come in if you want to join us on the video chat or if you just want to come in here grab some prayer, you know. Some whatever we're just gonna flow in the spirit. The guy gives us a, a word. We're just moving the prophetic. If you need deliverance, we could do the, our deliverance prayer. You know that's what Jesus did. He always spoke the truth. Now we spoke the truth to all of you. Now it's time for demonstration. Hallelujah. Sister Hello. Angie needed here. some prayer. Amen. I don't know if she still's on. Is on here. Let me here, put this but... information in here. Let's see. Praise God. We hope all of you are you know are being blessed and that you guys are you know. We pray that you guys just just receive boldness, the boldness of the Holy Spirit as you tune into this podcast yeah. to never keep your mouth shut. I don't care who it is. It could be yeah. your brother, your blood brother, your blood sister, your, even your mom and your dad. Even Jesus said, I came to bring division. I didn't come to bring peace. I came yeah. to bring division. Even the people in your house, they may turn against you if you start to preach the true gospel. They'll hate you for, for it. But, yeah. but Christ said, count that, count that, what, you know, what, what did he say? Count that a joy. That's a blessing. <laughs> oh, joy. <laughs> count it all joy. So let me see. I'm putting his meeting ID here. I'm looking for it. There it is. Lose the, lose the genius behind the technical <laughs> part of 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 this podcast. I wouldn't be able to do it. That's I'm, all him. I'm learning. Pray for me, guys. High five. Amen. <laughs> if you guys got something in your heart, you can just let it out right now while I put these numbers in. <laughs> Well, no, just just like what you just said, it's 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 not love if you're willing to sit there and watch someone perish. I don't care who it is, your kids, your spouse, your parents. If you're willing to just sit back and watch someone perish because you want to save the relationship, you need to question your love for that individual. That's why the scripture says, if you look at the two great commandments, the first one is this: love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your body, all your soul, right? Mm. And then it says, love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. We need to do one on proper love because people have a skewed idea of what love is. Come on. I want to submit this to you according to those two great commandments. What it says to me is this. I can't properly love Lewis and Jeremy unless I love God first Amen. and foremost Amen. above all things. I can't Amen. properly love my neighbor or anybody on this earth unless I love God first and foremost and above everything and everybody. Amen. That's Amen. right. Amen. You go to go. The, uh, the zoom there. There you go. Zoom. There's the zoom meeting ID right there. Mm. There's the passcode. If you guys have any trouble getting in, just leave it in the comment section, but we're waiting for you guys to come tap in. Like I said, get some prayer. If you have any questions, what, whatever you have, just jump in. You have the option to show your face, or you don't have to show your face. It could just be audio. Amen. But Come fellowship with you us. guys. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So we hope you guys have been blessed by this. You know, what we like to do is, like I, like I said last week, we don't sit down and, and rehearse this, and, and we just know what the topic is, and then we go to the secret place. We seek the face of God, and we come on here, and we, and we just flow. Like We don't look at each other's notes. I don't know what scriptures they have. We just come on here and we flow, but we always back it up with the word of God. When somebody tells you something, you, the first thing you should say, listen, show me in the word of God. If someone I got says, a scripture for that. If somebody says, listen, homosexuals can go to heaven, pull out the scripture and say, no, they can't. Did they say fornicators can go? Hey, I know that verse by heart. First Corinthians 6, 9. No, I got a scripture cannot. for that. Hold on. Amen. Well, yeah. I want to say second Corinthians four. Let me get it. I mean, verse 13. I mean, you got Revelation 21, 8. Come you know, on. Unbelief. It, it even says unbelief. Unbelief mm. holds you from heaven. So, you know, that's right. If you're holding on to something and you don't believe like Abraham believed, even the unbelief, well, unbelief in Jesus, unbelief in his um, in his power, even that will mm. hold you back. And, and, and that's something we're all learning. We're, you know, we're not teaching right. you because we we're there. We're teaching you because we're there's power in the words. That's um, right. But like Lewis said, if somebody tells you anything about God. Hmm. There needs to be chapter and verse, because if there isn't, they made it up. Hey man, I'm just being real. They just made it up. And here it is right here. Check it out. Check. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 13. Listen to what it says. Searching. 
we have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written mm. it's saying listen your faith everything that you believe and know about god must be written in the scriptures mm. if it's not you that's made it up that's right listen to wow. what it says again one more time yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah we i want to hear it having the same spirit of faith according as it is written oh. i believed Done. and therefore have i spoken we also believe and therefore speak powerful verse mm. everything powerful. that we believe our faith written. everything that i know about god everything that i believe about god everything that i say about god must come from the scriptures the scriptures, the scriptures. Yeah, amen, amen. if if it doesn't and then because here's another thing you got mm. a lot of people that come up and they always want to give somebody a word. And, and somebody's always hearing from God today. But mm -hmm. I've heard some things out of people's mouths oh where I know five verses that it is completely against what they claim God told them. And right. I want to say this to you, to, to, to all my prophets and those that hear from God. God will never tell anybody anything uh -oh. that contradicts uh -oh. his word. Uh -oh. I'll say it one more time. Watch out. He'll never tell anybody anything that contradicts the scriptures. If God told you something today that contradicts what the Holy Spirit wrote through Paul mm. or Peter or anybody else, you are a liar. Hmm. Absolutely. Whatsoever was written was written aforetime for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Mm. Wow. I'm laughing because I hear so many people always tell me, God said this. Like God told me, wake up, put my underwear on. God said, go oh, down God. over there. God smart, said this. Smart. God said that. God, that and, and I don't hear one bit of scripture in there. They might just throw one little scripture in there, but I'm like, did you even, did you take that scripture and put it in, in context? For an example, somebody might say, God said, none of us should judge. No, absolutely. You're wrong. God said we should judge believers, but not unbelievers. First Corinthians 5, 12 actually says it's your responsibility to judge those in the church mm. that are sinning but god is the one that judges the unbelievers go read it yourself and you Praise could god. you could you can inbox me if i if i'm twisting the scripture or correct me here hallelujah well, well as i was speaking i confirmed the confirmation of his verse that he confirmed about about what you said <laughs> <laughs> no but listen it's just it's just honestly so, so, so yeah, yeah 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 go ahead that unity, sounds unity. funny but you should do that <laughs> right no, I'm but, serious. All jokes aside, you should yeah. test what you hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. what the that's that, that's what the Bereans did in the book mm. of Acts. That's good. And and, and mm. the teacher that they had was the apostle Paul. Right. Come, on, Come on, this this is a man that 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 God used to raise people from the dead, plant numerous churches, signs yeah. and wonders were worked right. through him, right? Amen. And they still didn't take his word for it. Yeah, yeah. It says it says. I want to say second Corinthians. I want to say maybe, no, it's acts, maybe 17. Let me see if I can find it. I can look at, oh. it's, 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 it's Acts 17, maybe verse 11. Let me look okay. real quick. Okay. This is good because that it may sound like a joke, but that's what you should do. Yeah. Test, yeah. test everything that you know. You're right. He, even from me, I have no, I, I take no offense to that at all. And there's a lot of people that do though. But right. you shouldn't take any offense to that at all. You should test everything that you hear. Let me see. Right. Oh, right here it is. No, here no, it no, is. No. Acts 17, verse 11. Okay. 17. And it's talking about the, the, the Bereans. It says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Mm. It's saying, listen, these people here were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Hmm. The church the, the, where we got the epistles of first and second Thessalonians. He's saying, listen, mm -hmm. these people were no more noble than them. Why? What made them more noble? Look. And that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily to mm. see if those things were so. Uh, mm. That's oh. it. That's it. They didn't, the listen, they received the word, right? They received it, but then they searched the scriptures uh, to make sure, yep. to confirm what right, they right, heard right. you have to test what you hear and yeah. then the scripture says this made them more noble mm. Amen. Mm. Wow. Amen. 
Right, um, right, te- right. Test the scriptures. Amen. Let's see. Okay. So I got the Zoom. I got the uh, the Zoom information pinned in the comments. Our manager, my wife, we made her our official manager. Yeah, yeah. she's doing. <laughs> she don't know it yet. <laughs> she's doing pretty good. It's just the jazz in there. Come on, somebody want to get in here with us? Come on now. I guess more makeup, please, Jasmine. More, more makeup. <laughs> get over, get over. Here. <laughs> yeah, you're not on lunch break yet. Get, get. Sister Jazz, we, we need water, 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 coffee. <laughs> get over here first. Get over here first. Yeah, thanks, thanks, appreciate it. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Thank you. Pray. I was a little shiny. I'm a little shiny. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Man, look, well, well, Lou, you want to um, you want to pray for um. Sister, I believe it was Angie Lopez. She said that Let's she see. was admitted back to the hospital. Let me look back for the. Oh, wow. Look at my brother, Luke Wilson. He said that he he, he said that this what we talked about today, he says is cleansing his spirit. Praise God. Ooh, come on. Oh, that's God. my bro right there. Luke, he's, he's a man of God. No, that's my a blessing Luke. there, man. That's that's oh, yeah. that's definitely a blessing to hear that. And Kurt, here it is. She said, hi, God bless. Oh, God. I would like prayers. I got admitted to the hospital again. Okay, we're going to pray for you right now. Junito, I see you. Father, in Jesus' name, we just Jesus. give you glory, yes. honor, and praise. We thank you, Lord God, that through your stripes, Angie is healed in Jesus' name. Yes, Father, Father, we pray that she may just continue to speak life out of her mouth mm. because your word says that there's death and life in the power of the tongue. I'm reminded when, when the girl died in, in your word, but you said she's not dead. She's just she's sleeping, asleep. oh Come God. On. So right now, Angie is not sick. She is healed in yes. Jesus' name. We send Thank forth healing upon her right now. Father, may you touch her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. We cancel every assignment of, of the enemy. We break every lie. We break every deception. Yes, Father. And Father, we even thank you right now for, for the ministering spirits that will go there and minister to her right now. May your will be done in her life. May your will be done in her mind. And even as she rests on that bed right now, may she be still and know that you are God. And may you speak to her through dreams and through visions and give her clear direction, precise direction, that she may not be confused but Lord, we break all confusion because you are not the author of confusion. Give her clarity and give her that direction. I sense right now, Angie, as I sense in the spirit of God that you've been searching for direction. Mm. You've been searching for clarity and yes. the Lord is going to give it to you as you stay there and you meditate upon his goodness. Mm. Don't look at your circumstances, but just look at the Lord Jesus Christ. Just mm. looking at him means that he is love, that he is merciful, that he's graceful. Looking at him means that he has all the answers. Looking at him means that he has the revelation and the wisdom and he has the healing. That's looking at Jesus. And as you do that, you're going to receive clear direction of what he wants you to do or why you're still here, why you're still breathing. You're going to, it's going to start to be unveiled to you. You will see it clearer than ever in Jesus mighty name. In Jesus amen. name. Amen. 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 Listen, amen. I just want to encourage you guys. If anybody is in here and you want prayer, don't be, don't be ashamed and prayer works. Amen. Um, if you need healing, God is a healer. Just today. I myself was afflicted mm. early this morning. I got so sick. I felt so sick earlier today. I almost was going to like cancel on the guys and not come mm. on there. My flesh right. wanted to do that, mm. but the spirit convicted me. And I said, no, 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 no. And I declared out of my mouth, I said, I rebuke this sickness in the name of Jesus. I'm not asking you to leave. Mm. You will leave in Jesus Amen. name. Amen. And I'm telling Amen. you, it left. I had chills. I was warm. Ooh. I had no Come energy. On. My body Amen. was hurting everything, but Thank I rebuked Jesus. it and it left in Jesus Thank name. Thank we Jesus. have power and authority over sickness Amen. and infirmities through the cross of Jesus Christ. He says, by his stripes, we are healed. If you Amen. need healing, if you know somebody that needs some healing, come on, get in here. Listen, the Zoom meeting ID is right there. The password is right there. Amen. Don't be shy. Hop in yeah. with us. Come That's on, like, tap in. Go ahead, Jerry. Go ahead. I see Jerry. Jerry's I, like, I'm <laughs> bouncing. I'm like, what you're saying is like, what you're saying is so confirmation. Like, so so <laughs> simply, so simply, I'm seeing the word faith in my mind. Come on. And like, as Lou was praying, what was her name? Angie? Angie? Angie has to Angie has to accept the healing because simply this little phrase. Faith pleases God. It doesn't matter if you think you're going to be healed or, 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 or it's impossible. If you have faith that you are, Come on. if you have, it's, it's word. It's not me. And I'm not the author of it. I'm not the perfecter of it. I'm not perfect at it yet, but this is something that I'm speaking. If you have faith that automatically pleases God, what happened before Abraham had a baby? He had, he believed and God counted it as righteousness. That's right. Not, not what he uh, 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 did by tradition and carry his Bible. And he said the right thing. He believed in his heart that God, will mm. he believed faith f- one thing that pleases our god is faith 
So if you just say, I am healed, up in heaven, our Father and the Holy Spirit here with us is pleased. Yes. I would love for I would love yeah. for him to be pleased with me. But so I, yeah, I got the word faith. Amen. When Gerard said that, I got the word faith. Faith pleases in the prayer, in this prayer, faith pleases God. That's I need right. healing too. I need healing too. Amen. Another prayer request right here says off from uh, I believe George. It says, I'd like to request prayer for healing for my mother who has surgery. So one of your brothers want to, you know, pray for him. We'll agree together. And praise God. Jerry, you want to take it? Amen. Yes. What's his name? George? George. Pray for his mother that yep. just, uh, George. had surgery. She has yes, surgery. Lord, you, yes, Lord. You know uh, George's mother, God, and Jesus yes, and Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, you see all your arm, your... Lord, you are omnipresent, God. You are everywhere, God. Lord, you are the creator yes, of the stars, of the moon, God. Lord, you are the creator of this earth, God. Lord, you hold the earth in your hand, God. Lord, the, yes, Lord, the stars are light years away, God. You are the God who, who, who loves us, who actually watches us. Lord, even as Sodom and Gomorrah cried out, even as uh, mm. the children of Israel cried, you heard the cries. So we're asking you right now in Jesus' name, Lord, hear George's uh, cry, God. He, yes, is, he is your child. He is your, he is your heir. Uh, he, he loves you. He is your son, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, grant his request in Jesus' name, Lord. Heal his mother, God. Uh, a quick recovery in Jesus' name, Lord. By faith, we know that you are watching, that your hand's over her. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, uh, somebody needs a prayer for her, uh, her husband. I believe, mm -hmm. if I'm saying your name right, Cabero. 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 Brother Cabrera Gerard, to, yeah. Yeah, Cabrera okay. Ash. Amen. And praise Hallelujah. God. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just thank you for Lord right now. Thank you for my sister, Lord. Yes. Um, I lift up her husband to you right now. We have no idea what's going on, but you do. You know what they have need of. Um, so I pray that you would touch his mind, touch his heart. Father, give him a hunger and thirst and a burning fire for you like never before. Heal his body, Lord. Mm, Heal yes, his Lord. spirit. Heal his mind. Jesus. And yes, we Lord. just thank you, Lord, that there will be peace in that home. Yes, there will be unity and reconciliation. There will be love, Father. Jesus, and that house will serve you. As Joshua said, me and my house will serve the Lord. That yes. house will serve you, Father. And Hallelujah. we just thank you, Lord, and give you glory and honor and praise. Satan, we yes, bind Lord. you and we rebuke you. Any unclean spirits in that Name home, we Jesus. command you to leave. We're not Please asking you. Jesus, We're Jesus. telling you to leave. Yes, Make your yes, exit. Out. Pack your yes. love and Jesus. leave in the name no of authority. Jesus mm, yes. and we bind you and we just thank you Lord and give you praise in Jesus you. name right. amen amen that's right we have authority the, the Bible says that, that God gave us authority he said I, I give you authority to I love this verse right to trample on scorpions serpents and over all the power of the enemy amen. who's the Glory devil God. not some of the power all the power but it's like uh, what uh, uh, Jeremy was saying do you do uh, you actually believe that when you say that though like uh, Jeremy was saying you got faith a, when you believe that there's a brother saying he has issues with the cold, Lou. He's trying to McFly, Isaiah McFly. He's trying to get in. Okay, let me double check, make sure. McFly. He can just use the flux capacitor um, and uh, McFly. I'm, uh, back to the future joke. Oh, 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 my God. Back to, back to the future. <laughs> let me make I sure was... I put the code in correctly here. He said the code don't work. What is it? Eight seven five eight seven five three eight nine three eight nine three one nine. Jasmine's laughing at you, Jeremy. I'm sorry. Did she get that, or or, or did I have to explain it for it her? It went way over my head. Okay. I get it now, but okay. when oh, you said man. you put it in wrong, Lou. Yep. Sorry, we're gonna get it right right now. That's why no one's in, Lou. You see. That's why no one's in. I messed up. Sorry, guys. Are you guys going to fire me now? Next week, see? somebody else will take over. I see? did say he was the best. But see, he messed up. He didn't say you guys are judging me. He repented. Mm. Mm -hmm. He says, Ooh, I'm sorry. Must. I'm sorry. We forgive you. Thank you. No condemnation. Hallelujah. All Hold right, on, so brother. We're going to throw up the right one right we're, now. Yeah, we're going to throw it up. Let me see. Let me, I'm just putting the passcode. Then you could jump in right here. Seven. What I did was instead of um 42 is 32. So 758. Oh. There we go. Somebody. All right. There's the proper one. It's 42, it's proper, not it's 32. 42. Yeah, I butchered it. Come on, Forgive Isaiah. Me. Mr. McFly. Come on in. Mr. McFly, yes. Um, it's just, a, it's just the, I'm gonna um, pin that, pin that comment. Is he himself here, or is he his his older self or his younger self? 
<laughs> oh my God, Jeremy. <laughs> I'll stop, I'll stop. Let's get serious now. All right. Come on in. No, Jazz, you didn't mess up. It was me. Pin, pin, oh. uh, make a comment on the new one so I could pin it. Eric you Cortez know. must know Back to the Future. He's laughing in the comments. Yeah, there's, there's some laughing going <laughs> on laughing here. In here. I'm He's sure he comedian. got it. <laughs> I'm sure he heard it his whole life. I'm just being old. I'm being, I'm probably, I'm probably, I'm, I'm probably way late on that joke. Yeah. Just, I don't know. Well, praise God. God is good. We hope all you being blessed once again. Um, yeah, Come we're on. waiting for um for him to tap in. So, so now you guys got to be, in, you know, bold in, in the Lord. And when people say that thing, we can't judge. Now you're actually accountable for tuning into this podcast. Oh. You're accountable wow. to tell them that this is not biblical. What's coming out your mouth? And we gave you scripture proof good that word. it's not biblical. Now He's you're saying, accountable because you locked in with us. He's with saying Jesus. this. He's saying it still doesn't work, Lou. Nah, really. Hold up. What did I do wrong here? Did I do something wrong again? Let me double check. Cynthia said, "Amen." Blessing, sister. I appreciate you fellowshipping with us tonight. Cynthia. So it says 875-389-31942. Uh -huh. Yep. What about the passcode? Seven five, hold on. Seven five eight three four seven. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yep. Don't put the old one. Don't put the 42. Put 32. Don't don't do the one that's pinned in the comments. If somebody could uh Somebody got to rewrite the one that I put. If you could, if one of you guys put it in the comment section, I could pin it. I can't pin my own comment, I don't think. It won't let me pin my own. Jasmine, pin it. Jazz, put it put it up again. Manager. Can Manager, we, can you, where you at? Can we? Okay, she, she just did it. Okay. Can we count on you? Yes, we can. I was going to have a quick meeting in, the, meeting in the morning about maybe a new, but it's fine. I think we're good. Oh, there he is. There goes McFly. He's in. Oh, See? There he's we go. in. All right. Tapped in. There we yeah. go. You guys can take. Let me go. I'm doing something on the side. Isaiah. Isaiah. Hello. Comments. Says he's connecting. Thank Isaiah. you, sister. 42, not 32. Here we go. Isaiah's McFly. Let's see. We can't hear you here. Hello. Hello. I see his name. This is Steve. Check your microphone. See if your microphone is on mute. You'll see mute in the corner and just press there, there it is. is. But there's your video. But we can't we can't hear you though. Little technical difficulties. You'll see a little microphone in the corner that says mute. Just hit that to connect to audio. Yeah, the bottom left. Uh, we okay. lost. Oh, there he is. Wait. Oh, no. We lost McFly. He might be back. Okay. Quick. You, you can always put it in the comments. If you have <laughs> issues, you can always put it in the comments section. And we'll Jeremy. definitely pray. Oh. Jeremy says that was, that was, that was quick. Well, let's just prophesy that there would be quick, quick healings. Well, brother, uh, brother Cortez delivery. said he'll try it. You still there, Eric? Try it. First come, first serve. Oh, that's true. Serve you with blessings. Amen. Come on, guys. We mm. want to pray with you. Come on. Don't be scared. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. Uh, Are we waiting for you, brother Eric? Oh, uh, you know, you know, we're also accountable too. I mean, the Bible does say, "Beware those who teach." So, so Ooh. Lord, put a put a protection around us, God. Lord, keep us Amen. keep us humble, keep us protected, God, because you know we That's don't right. know it all. We don't we don't claim to be the the. You know, God says, "Don't call." Jesus said, "Don't call call anybody teacher." So we do Amen. declare protection over our lives, God, Amen. for even de declaring this word. We rebuke the devil's uh, 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 schemes that he might have over us. 
That's right. Have no authority in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Well, that's that. That's when you know th there's there's something else that has been removed from the body of Christ. You ready? The mm. fear of the Lord. Mm. Wow. That's where the fear of the Lord comes into play, right? The scripture oh. says, let not many of us become teachers for we have received in our, for we shall receive in ourselves a stricter judgment. Yeah, man, so, yeah. Right. So for me, I'm going to be honest with you when I'm preparing to speak anywhere or preach anywhere, uh, Eric says, give him two minutes low. We should have but two minutes when I'm, when I'm preparing to speak anywhere, I tremble, not because I'm worried about people, Amen. but because I'm about to deliver God's word and I right. want to do that right. And I want to do that correctly. The scripture exactly. says we should rightly divide the word of truth. And I'm going to be honest with you. You cannot prepare lazily to share God's word because mm -hmm. there is many people that want to preach, but they have no desire to study the scriptures and rightly divide the word of truth. And if that's what you want to do, your desire really is to perform and right, come share on. God's word. This is, it's, 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 it's not a performance. It's not about sounding good and giving a good word. It's about sharing God's word that's and true. the Holy spirit moving behind it. There's, there's Mr. McFly right okay, there. Now, now, now he's connecting to audio. We didn't see that last okay. time. Did not. I said did not. It says did not. It said did not. It changed. It said did not. He's on there. Hold on. Isaiah's, here it is, connecting to, oh. there it is, you there? Hello? Hey. Oh, there she is. Okay, the sister, blessings. Hold on, you muted the microphone again, unmute it. Unmute it, there you go. There it is. Bye-bye. Hey, blessings. man, how are you? I'm doing fine, what about you? Bless, bless, oh, God. what's up? Oh, oh. oh, my God. She left wow. again. <laughs> He's pushing to right. the bottom. Yeah. Oh. No, I think it sounds like, oh, my gosh, or whatever. Should we pray? Lou, why don't you pray for her? Well, just pray, pray for her. You know, Isaiah, just... well, Father, right. Well, Father, in Jesus' That's name, we just, we just thank you for our Isaiah's. Father, we just pray that she may surrender to you. Yes. And that she may be just be in Jesus. tune with your voice. Yes. And be led by your spirit, oh, God, and not by the flesh not be entangled with the affairs of this world, oh God, but may she truly surrender to you and seek after your kingdom and your righteousness first and all things will be added. Like the word says, oh God, may she put you above all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 And I want to apologize to, to my sister because I mistaked you for a man by the name. I called you Mr. McFly. Right. I'm just going to declare this boldly. There is absolutely a difference between a man and a woman. Praise God. I believe the rest. Hey, blessings, brother. Hey, man, God bless. God bless you. Can you hear? Blessings. Blessings, brother. How are you? God bless. God bless you, brother. Where you calling in from? California. Oh, okay. Praise West God. West Coast. Yeah. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's three hours. It's three hours difference over there, right? So it's probably like what time is it? It's probably like six uh, something. Seven. Almost seven. seven Almost. Seven. Yeah. Seven. Okay. Yeah. Send yeah. It, send us some of that sunshine, brother. Oh, right. Man. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, it's starting to uh, getting hot, getting warm now. Okay. Yeah. So you need some prayer? You have a question while you're in here? Well, just uh, pray for the ministry that God has called me to do. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Go ahead, what Luke. is that ministry? Do you know what that ministry is? Well, um, we I don't know. Uh, okay. It could be anything, you know. Amen. Cause because oh, we 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 could be doing uh, work uh, on the streets. We could be ministering at church. We could. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. What's your, and what's your name again? Eric Cortez. Eric. Cor oh, Eric yeah. Cortez. Hey, okay, hey, that's my know. guy. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, always, yeah. We're always tapping in with each other. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. Now oh, I get yes. this. We get to see your face now. Okay. We're definitely yeah, had, we're encouraged I, by all the comments and everything you put on the post. We see you. Yeah, I had a an Instagram a while back. I mm. deleted it, and I was following your uh, page on Instagram, but uh, I just deleted deleted my account on uh, Instagram uh, like two years ago. But I mean, now I have Facebook back again. But Amen. it's all good. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, well, let's pray, Father, in Jesus' name. We just yes, thank Father. you for Brother Eric. 
Thank Lord, you, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that your will is being done in his life, oh God. Yeah. Lord God, we just thank you that he would just continue to be humble. Your word says that the humble get exalted, Lord. Oh my. You say those that exalt themselves, then they will be humbled. So yes, we thank Father. you, Lord God, mm. that he has a heart that is open to hear your voice and to just be obedient to you, Lord God. Even oh. now, I just sense the, the, the brokenness, Lord. You, yes. You're showing me his brokenness. Mm. He has a brokenness for you. Mm. He has a true heart after God, like David did, Lord. He, wanted, he wants to seek after your face and keep you before his right hand, oh God. Yes. So may your will be done in his life. May you open up his eyes, Holy Spirit, because you are the one that searches the deep things of God and you reveal them to us. So Jesus. reveal them to Eric, Lord. What yes, is the Lord. will of God? What is he called to do? What are his gifts? What are his yes. talents, oh God? Yes. Even those hidden talents that he don't know about, you are the one Holy Spirit that will open Amen. his eyes because, Lord, you say you will give us the desires of our heart. And as he delights himself in you, as he continues to delight himself in you, it will be clear to him, Lord. He will not be confused and he will know exactly what you called yes, him Lord. to do, Lord. So we just thank you that this man will lay hands on many and they will be healed. Yes, Lord. Lord God, he will cast out devils. He will cast Jesus. out demons. He just won't speak with enticing words, but he will operate with power and demonstration of yes, the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' yes, mighty name we pray. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Brother Eric, God yes. made you the way that he did for a reason. Amen. Don't try to fit in. You weren't called oh, no. to fit in. You were called to stand out. Um, I see a sincere hunger in you to serve God. I heard it in Come your on. voice. As you were talking, there's like a, there's a burning and there's a fire, there's a sincere hunger um, to serve the Lord. So just step out on faith and do what he's telling you to do. There's some, I believe there's some ideas that he's showing you and will show you that seem oh, yeah. crazy, but they're God ideas. One of the things that I had to learn is God can't bless what I won't do. Amen. I need to step out on faith and just, and just do it. Take the first steps and just step out and God will begin to work and move behind that. He Amen. honors that. Hey, let me, um, what's his name? Eric, Eric, hey, Eric, um, before Lewis prayed, Lewis prayed humility and heart like David. I, God gave me those two, Lou, to the two exact words before you start praying. I was going to tell you before you start praying, God sees your humble heart and he's going to raise Amen. you up. And he doesn't care about, like Gerard said, we're all confirming the same thing. Amen. God does not care about anything else except the heart like David. That's and he's right. going to use you. He's going to use you tremendously because you have a, a crazy humbleness. Amen. And Satan, Satan was kicked out of any position. He was out of because he had pride. Right. And you have, the, you have the opposite. You have the biggest heart. That's right. That's right. I will, I will confirm it. This is God speaking through all of us because the same exact word came. The two keep humble and heart like David. I... So. Amen. Amen. God, God be encouraged, brother. Amen. God speaking. Be encouraged. God speaking to you. And just one thing, you know, sometimes things just take time. You know what I mean? We're not doing nothing wrong. We're not being disobedient. It just takes some time. It's all it's all on God's time. So we just hope you're encouraged. We hope you're blessed. And we, and, um, if you discern that as the voice of the Lord speaking, then uh, you know we pray that you you take action on that and just be encouraged. And and, and, and I'm going to continue to pray for you as well. I'm going to write you down. Um, that God will connect you with the right people yes, who you're connected yes. to matters, who, who mm. you're, who you're in fellowship with absolutely matters. And I'm yeah. going to pray that God will send you people that are like-minded, like-hearted that will pray for you and encourage you to move forward in what God has for you to do. Let's build God's kingdom. It ain't about our kingdom. Amen. Not at all. Amen. And like, and like we always say, like all three of us, I think Gerard said it last, the more you give out, the more God will fill it back in. So just start speaking, start in Home Wait. Depot or, or Lowe's, wherever you're at. Start spreading the word, and then God will refill it up again. But if you, but if, but if you keep it inside, the, the devil wants you to keep it inside. Yeah, That's right. exactly. And one of the things, uh, I mean, probably you guys don't know my testimony. Uh, one of these days, I'll, uh, I'll share a short story uh, of my testimony. I've been through uh, from 2004 to up to last year. I've been off and on uh, helping churches and ministries. And, uh, oh boy, I'll tell you guys, it's not, uh, I know God is exposing, exposing uh, mm. uh, churches and ministries. Come on. And uh, I, I've been there. I, I used to help uh, pastors. Let me tell you, oh boy, you don't want to even hear it. You don't want to even hear it. Okay. Yeah. We so, probably yeah. just went through it. Yeah, you uh, never yeah. know. And we got some and last year, and last year, uh, I let go of one of uh, uh, as I was a leader of the youth. Uh, 
uh, same thing. Oh, uh, I let it go because uh, of, of pride. Because of pride. Because of oh. pride as one of the reasons pride oh. and uh, manipulation. Manipulation. Oh, man. yeah. Well, 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 well the, like I said, that's why I believe yeah. the Lord. Don't try to fit in. Oh, no. There's, yeah. there's a reason that y'all didn't agree. Two can't oh. walk unless they agree. That's right. Mm. Amen. Amen. Two, two right. cannot walk unless they agree. Amen. Well, we would definitely, we would love to have you, uh, you know, eventually come back on and give yeah. you a testimony. So stay in Amen. contact with us and uh, we pray Amen. that you have a, a blessed day, brother. All right. Glory to Jesus. All right. Thanks All for tapping in. Jesus. Amen. God bless. Amen. Much love, bro. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. Wow. Man, God loves that man, huh? Like, man, he really does. He spoke, wow. he, he spoke the same thing through all three of us. The same as, you know, God is good. God loves that guy. He really does. Hey, wow. Brother Dominic, what's going on? Dom. Denise T. Brother Dom's on here. I believe Don't Tori me. Johnson. Are you trying to get in, brother? You you could get in now. How do you say? Domenico, you say Domen. Do, Domen. Domen. Rescue no. and revive. I say Domen. 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 I don't know how to say it. Make sure you guys a... go and look up Rescue and Revive Ministries. That's right. Relax, That's right. Follow his content. He's a man of God. He loves that Jesus. brother's the real deal. He's the truth. Real I don't deal. say that lightly. Trust me. Man it's, of God there. It's hard the to truth. say that. For me, it's hard to say any. A lot of people are the real, the real deal, just to be honest with you. But Domenico's the real deal. That's He's right. Good, good brother. He's so, a real deal. He's a good brother. <laughs> That brother had a uh, this is a good he, brother, right? He had a good sincerity. Brother. He he had a, a strong sincerity in his voice, man. He really did. Yeah, man. He was sincere heart, and very. I humble. saw him humbled and, and just the Lord was just down like I'm gonna say with downloading stuff. It just seemed like on his knees, like at his bed, and he's not gonna. He's like he spends time in a secret place. You can tell. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I see him crying. Yeah, I don't. Right. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Yep. So the Lord's gonna bless him mightily. Yeah, that's what God Amen. uses the humble, the lowly. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's well, right. We'll probably wait a little bit and we're going to tap out and let's get in. Wow. Hour went by quick. I believe we've been on longer than this is the longest we stood on this episode right here. We have some. Oh, we were going to, I thought today was the, I thought today was a Saturday, midnight, Saturday. Oh, Mid oh I didn't hear about that okay. one. No, yeah, we didn't yeah, yeah. Discuss we're going to lose all the, all the views. <laughs> we're going to get like two. <laughs> Look, you see what I said? I said, no, we, we didn't discuss. <laughs> oh, yeah. That wasn't discussed. Oh, well, you missed well, that meeting? We might want to, you know, we got some things to discuss. You might be seeing us more than just one day a week. Let's just say that. Hallelujah. God's will be done. But let's see if somebody wants to tap in here. Let me see. I got to talk to my see. agent about that. I got to talk to Jasmine about that. The manager. <laughs> Do need some more coffee. Coffee. You ain't you ain't going to get to sleep. You have another cup. I know. All right. All right. Coffee puts me to sleep. Now. Really? Coffee. Opposite, opposite oh, yeah. effect. Yeah, it does. It puts me to sleep. Placebo. Hey, man, who's coming? Who's coming? Hey, we have, I mean, Anybody left? Somebody want to get on? I believe God wants to touch one more person. Mm. Come, Come on, on he's prophesying. Hallelujah. Five, five and two. God. eight people tapped in right now. God wants to see what we're going to do. Five and two. It's a preview right there. It's a preview. You guys don't know about yeah. Five and two. Oh I want God <laughs> wants to see what we're gonna do. It's a preview. Praise God. You see, I told the brother it matters who you're connected to. He 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 started talking about some places he done been delivered from. You gotta you gotta judge it correctly righteously, like you said. You gotta judge around people around you righteously. It's powerful. Righteous but, judge, right? The right judgment. Amen. I Blessings, no power, no problem. Yeah, I see this one sister right here. She said, you can text me anytime. Oh, this brother Tori said, you can text me anytime. Cabero said, thank you all for your prayers and obedience. God bless you all. Take care. Looking forward to next time. And I believe Amen. that's confirmation that it's time to, to end it in some prayer right now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, Father, we just thank you for this great time together. We just pray, Lord, that you may continue to give us all ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Holy Spirit, may you always help us in... Uh, Remind us to examine ourselves, oh God, because we all fall short of your glory. But that's no excuse to live in sin. That's no excuse to, to live in defeat, but to always look at Calvary and remember the power, that there's power in the blood of Jesus. May we not just sing that song, but may we have a revelation and an understanding of it. Give us revelation of the blood, oh God, that there's power in the blood of Jesus. 
we, we can have fellowship with you because you shed your blood. We can hear your voice because you shed your blood and we can walk in victory, oh God. There's so many things that we can do because you shed your blood. There's power. Power happened at Calvary, Lord. We thank you for Calvary. And Lord, you said it was tough. You said, if this cup could pass for me, let it pass. But if not, yeah. your will be done. So it wasn't an easy thing, oh God. You saw those nails going in your hands and in your feet, but you did it. You became sin who knew no sin. So we can, Lord God, so we can become your righteousness. You humbled yourself. You carried the cross. Mm. And we thank you for that, Lord. May we never thank forget you, that you, Jesus Lord. died for my sins. We love you, Lord. Yes. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. And we thank you for meeting us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless God everybody. God bless all of you. We might see you throughout the week for some prayer. And um, but if not, we'll definitely see you next week, Saturday, 8 30 Eastern time. We thank everybody for tapping in from California, wherever you're from. And I'll make sure you guys continue to like, comment, share. And if you need prayers, just leave them in the comments and we'll definitely touch on those. So God Amen. bless all of you. Stay Amen. encouraged in the Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless.